Are you serious? Are you serious? What? I mean, it's amazing. This The picture you're looking at, that is the first United States patient with Ebola. Thomas Eric Duncan is in a hospital right now in isolation in, in a very critical situation with Ebola. He's in a Dallas hospital. Now, two days after he was sent home from this same hospital, remember, this man was in Liberia. He was around family members who had Ebola. He even helped lift one patient, a family member, a 19-year-old pregnant woman, onto a cot. He then came home, back to America. He arrived on the 20th of September. By the 24th of September, he was sick, sick enough that he went to the hospital, running a fever and was vomiting. He told him he was from Liberia, but he was still not admitted or tested for Ebola. He was contagious, no question, in the, in the waiting room and among the medical staff. He goes back home. Two more days. It's now September 26th. He's deathly ill. Matter of fact, let me read to you the scene. Two days after he was sent home from a Dallas hospital, the man who the first person to be diagnosed with Ebola in the United States was seen vomiting outside of his apartment on the ground outside the apartment complex as he was bundled into an ambulance. His whole family were screaming. He got outside and he was throwing up all over the place, said the uh, one of the residents, describing the chaotic scene before the man was admitted to Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital, uh, where he is now in isolation with extreme precautions in serious condition. The hospital cited that the man's privacy as a reason for not identifying him. That's true. That's HIPAA laws would prevent that. However, uh, G. Mellish, who said he was a family friend, identified the man in Texas infected with Ebola as Thomas Eric Duncan. And that's the man you see in the picture. Now, the New York Times said that Duncan is in his mid-40s, helped transport a pregnant woman suffering from Ebola to the hospital in Liberia where she was turned away for lack of space. Duncan helped bring the woman back to her family's home and carried her into the house where she later died. The newspaper reported four days later, Duncan left for the United States and he caught the virus. Now, he came in contact with 18 people, including five children. They're all being monitored right now by the CDC. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means they're in isolation, in quarantined, or are they in a, their own bedrooms with a video monitor, making sure they stay in the room and checking on their conditions. I just don't know what this means. But uh, certainly, we have a crisis beginning in America. And the same day that this man was admitted in the hospital, the second time he went to the hospital, on the 26th, of September with Ebola, the same exact day is when the woman was beheaded in Oklahoma by the radical Islamist, Mr. Nolan. It's as if we, the darkness, it's as if the spiritual darkness invaded America the same day, same time. Matter of fact, it was that night, which of course, I didn't know about either one of these accounts. But that night is when I had the prophetic dream, uh, which, which has nothing to do, I don't think it has anything to do with these two incidents, but it just seems as if uh, certainly there's a uh, spiritual awareness the Lord is bringing to America that we seriously have to be praying, church. I mean, in all, all <laughs> the truth is this, the power of prayer still works. And if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, I will hear from heaven, forgive the sin, and heal 
the land, and the land truly needs healed. I'm Pastor Begley. Let's keep praying for this man right here, Thomas Duncan, and let's pray that this plague stops